Hello, my name's Josh, and hopefully you've seen our film in which we visited the Peak District, where we were exploring some rewilding projects that were being supported by the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust. I've now returned back to the museum, where I'm with museum scientist Katie Ross, um, where we're going to talk a bit more about peat bogs. So the Peak District is famous for its peat bogs, but what actually is peat? So peat is a type of soil, but it's quite different from other soils in that it's really high in plant material or organic matter content. And this organic matter is really good at storing water. So actually, about 90% of our peat is just water. Wow, that is a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and what role does it play um, storing like carbon and that side of things as well? Yeah, so um, lots of people have probably heard recently how famous these peatlands are becoming for their role in storing carbon. Um, I guess like most ecosystems, the plants are growing at the surface. As they grow, they're taking in CO2 or carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and they're using that to form their plant sugars and also their structural material. The difference with the peatland is that when these plants die, rather than decomposing, these really wet waterlogged conditions stop oxygen getting into the soil. And also often it's quite acidic, so it's quite inhospitable for different decomposers to live. So instead of being broken down, this organic matter just builds up year on year over time, forming this really rich, dense carbon layer of peat that we kind of are, are familiar with. Mm. And this process actually happens quite quickly compared to other soils. So peat forms at about two millimetres a year. Um, and that's compared to soil, which is about Which what? can, you know, take almost 10 to 20 times as much to form the same amount. Um, and these environments are so good at storing carbon it's thought that actually about 44% of all the carbon stored in soil is stored in our peatlands, despite them only covering about 3% of the Earth's surface. So that's more than our rainforests and other that's things. That's extraordinary. And so that extremely wet environment is basically critical to yeah. the reason why they can store and hold so much carbon, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and where typically do we find peat bogs? So peat bogs, they're actually found all over the world. Um, so we kind of associate them again with the, these wet ecosystems, so areas where there's high rainfall. So all across kind of northern Europe, North America, northern Asia, in these wet, cold climates where decomposition is limited, we get these peats forming. But we're also getting quite interesting peat popping up in other places. So we're starting to see peat in the tropics. So there's a massive um, peatland area in the Congo Basin and also in Malaysia and places like that. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't really, yeah, you sort of associate peat with very northern climates. You wouldn't necessarily associate it with like a yeah, wet tropical these environment. Hot tropics. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're also hearing quite a lot more about sort of the threats that peat is facing and the main issues. I was wondering if you could talk us through some of those. Yeah, so I guess for a long time, we kind of didn't really value our peatlands. We saw them in these, these kind of wet, swampy places that you couldn't use for agriculture very easily. You couldn't really graze your animals there. So we spent a lot of time trying to convert them into more productive areas of land or what we thought were more productive areas of land. So in big areas of northern Scotland, a lot of these peatlands were drained for conifer plantations. You've got in the uplands of the UK, a lot of them are drained and burned to support um, grass shooting and grazing. And then as we move to southern England, you get um, the conversion of peatlands into agricultural croplands. So again, a lot of drainage to kind of lower the water table and make them easier to access and plant plant crops in. A big problem in the UK is the kind of commercial use of peat. So um, when we're growing things, when we're finding it in our compost, peat um, is you know, extracted from sometimes the UK and also across Europe. And about 4 million cubic metres of peat is imported every year as compost. Wow, that seems like such a waste of such an amazing environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with that, we're losing all the carbon that's kind of these peatlands have been storing all this time because we're taking them out of this water level that's kind of keeping them wet and stopping the oxygen getting in. And we're letting all the microbes suddenly get really active and start breaking it down and re-releasing all that CO2 back into the atmosphere. Right, which then, I guess, is sort of compounding issues like wildfires and that side of things as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we're seeing a huge increase in wildfires in our peatlands, particularly um, in some of these tropical peatlands. And not only is that kind of having a big impact on the emissions, so there was a big wildfire um, on a huge area of blanket bog in Scotland about five years ago, which doubled the emissions of Scotland for the time Whoa. it burned. But there's also human health implications of these burning peatlands. So burning this material releases tiny particulate matter, um, which we're finding can pass through the lungs and enter your bloodstream with some unknown consequences for human health. Wow, that's quite scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Um, but there are obviously some people who are doing some very good things and trying to restore the peat. And I was wondering if you could talk us through some of the initiatives to sort of conserve what we've got. Yeah, so I guess a lot of it is trying to keep this peat wet again. So there's huge efforts all around the UK and other places to try and retain more moisture in these ecosystems. So it's things like filling in the old drainage ditches, um, kind of trying to block uh, channels of water and where areas are actively eroding. It's reprofiling some very exposed um, peat areas. And also a lot of it is trying to get the vegetation, the peat forming vegetation back in the peat um, or back on these ecosystems. So there's loads of people growing things like sphagnum mosses and other plants that we associate with these environments and replanting them all by hand um, out on these big areas like in the peat district. That sounds extraordinary. Um and we've got some of these um, yeah. cool plants with us, haven't we? Um, I was wondering if you could talk us through a bit more about, like, I guess the critical role that sphagnum moss plays and like why it's so important yeah. to peat moss. Yeah, so in the UK, we kind of associate sphagnum with being the, the main peat building um, thing. And not only is it incredible for carbon storage, so, you know, it's growing and taking in all of this CO2, it's also incredible for other things. So it has a huge water retention capacity, which can help with flood alleviation and drought and also removing pollutants from these water mm. courses. Um, in fact, the sphagnum that we're looking at here, so I've not looked at it through a microscope, but I think it might be sphagnum palustre. Okay. Um, and that's thought to hold almost 20 times its own weight in water. Wow, that's a lot. I mean, we can, we can go a little bit of an experiment to see how, yeah. how much water this can hold. So we'll see. Um, it is quite, it's quite heavy for what it is, but I mean, yeah, that's a lot of water for what is a tiny amount yeah, of moss. Yeah, yeah, and it's not just that. I mean, someone was looking at a sphagnum moss like this and counting the microscopic animals that live in there, and they found 32,000 different species. So it also supports Whoa. like some incredible biodiversity as well. Wow, 32,000 in yeah, just one, yeah, one yeah. Planet. I don't know how they all fit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, and I guess it's not just moss that is relying on these um, peat bogs. Um, what other sort of critical habitat does it provide? Yeah, so we've got some other really incredible plants. So in the UK, we have some carnivorous plants that live in our peatlands. So things like sundews and butterworts. And they um, have kind of adapted to live in these environments because they're quite low nutrient. These plants can capture things like midges and flies and get their nutrients from them instead. And our peatlands also support some incredible, really rare birds. So things like hen harriers and cowies and lapwings. We should be doing more to protect we them. Should, yeah, yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, that was leading me on to my, I guess my final question is like, you know, you sort of touched on it then, but why should we care about peat bogs? You know, what, what, what is it about them that makes them so special? Yeah, so I think we've kind of talked a little bit about the carbon storage properties of them, which are becoming increasingly important in this climate crisis. Um, but it's other things as well. I mean, we looked at how good they are at storing water and they're really important and found about 70% of our drinking water originates from uplands where these peat bogs are the dominant ecosystem. So by increasing the health of these peatlands, we're reducing the downstream processing costs of cleaning up this water so we can drink it. And it's not just that and the biodiversity. I think they're really beautiful places to go and visit. Um, 15 of our national parks in the UK, so of those 15, 13 of them have peatlands in them. Um, and as well, they kind of, you know, sometimes from the outside seem like these brown, muddy, swampy, inaccessible places. But when you get up close, you can see just how incredibly beautiful some of these plants and animals are. And I think just for their, their kind of natural beauty, they're really incredible places. Well, thank you so much for telling us a bit more about peats and sort of sharing the love of, of these thank amazing you. environments. <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. Who knew that moss could hold so much water and contain so much life? If you enjoyed what you saw, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about biodiversity and rewilding in the UK, then check out our other videos.